Hi, this is David back with you once again. And what today we're going to do is uh, show content aware fill and also working merging two images together for a realistic uh, image. So we're going to start with this image. I, I like the background of this, but we're going to drop a different model on here. So what we want to do is is basically pull her out of this image. And to do that, we can you know there's several ways we can do stamp tool and do some different things like that if we want. Or what we can do is we can just do a quick selection tool. This is going to be using con content aware fill. And we're just going to go around here and just basically select her pretty quick. Thus, this is quick selection tool. So we have her selected. What we want to do now is expand the selection. So to expand the selection, what we need to do is go up to select, modify, and expand. And then depending on what resolution image we're working with, you know, it can make a difference. Uh, so you might have to play around with this a little bit. I'm going to shoot for 10. And that just bumps it out a little bit for around the edges. You can see how it kind of bumped it out a little bit. And actually, let's go ahead and bring that up just a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and expand that to 20 just to give a little more working room there. And then you'll be able to see it a little better. You can see a little more clearance around it. And then what we do is we basically just go up here to edit, fill. And then under use, we want to use the content aware fill. We don't want, want to make sure that nothing else is checked, but do content aware fill with 100% opacity in normal mode and then click OK. And it'll take a moment for this to kick in. So we'll let it just do its work. And then once it's finished, it generally will leave some little th tracers in there that we might want to clean up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and deselect it by selecting select and deselect. And actually, that did a pretty good job. Uh, we have some areas in, in the center here, uh, right down the center where the model was, that look a little funky and stuff like that. But I do know that the image we're putting in is going to cover up most of this. So I'm not even going to worry about that, to be perfectly honest. So now what I'm going to do is go up to my image that I want to move in here. And this is the subject I want to put in the image. So what I want to do is basically go ahead and drag this image on top of the other image. So I'm going to go ahead and pick my Move tool, click and hold down the mouse, and drag it up, keep the mouse held down, go to the next document, keep it held down until I'm back in, in front of the next image, and then let go of the mouse, and it will pop it in there for me. So now what I want to do is go through and uh, we want to get rid of some of this information in here now. We have um, basically too much information. I want to have her against the tree in this image. So what I need to do is pull her out of this image so that she's standing in front of the, the background. So to do that, I am again going to go to the, to the quick selection tool. And I'm just going to start, start selecting things here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make my little... Uh, selection tool a little larger. Um, it's a little on the small side. So to do that, I'm going to hit the brackets key, and that's uh, on the Mac. It's right next to my P letter P. So that will, um, it, depending on which bracket you hit, it'll either go up or down. And I'm just doing kind of a large selection to start. And then what I will do is then press the minus key and go back in and kind of get rid of some of the information I don't want. Now in here, I do want to get the rest of her head in here. I want to make sure I have all her hair and arm and everything. So I'm going to keep coming in here. I'm going to zoom in now, and I'm going to make my, my uh, selection tool a little smaller. So I'm going to hit that key next to the P again, the bracket, the left bracket. Come down, and I want to just basically get her hair in here. And I'm going to toggle back and forth using the Option key to go back to the minus and then let go of it to add a little more. Uh, we have some areas in here I wouldn't mind getting a little bit better. So I'm going to kind of just go back and forth between the Option key. And basically, you have to hold the Option key on for, for it to work if it's in the plus mode. And uh, somebody contacted me before about it not working that it started out in the minus mode and they had the option to get in the plus mode and that was basically these little switches up here where if you set it it starts out in the minus mode so it just depends on what you're working with so that's just your way to reset it i'm just going to keep select deselecting some areas through here And I don't really want this little area in here, so I'm going to go ahead and deselect this area, make my cursor a little smaller. And 
And that's done a pretty good job there. I can work with that. And on the tree, I want to let's let's double check her and make sure we kind of got most of her. We got a couple spots that are a little weird in here, but we can fix those in a few minutes. I want to make sure I have her hair, all of her hair in here. And I know this is an over selection. We'll be able to come back in. I can actually get rid of a little of this here. And I want to get a little more of the tree in here. So I'm going to actually make my little cursor a little smaller again, my selection tool. Just add some more back in there. I don't think I'm going to have too much of the left side of the tree because I am going to crop it in here. So a lot of this may not be in here. So, so right now, this is my selection. Now, at this point, what I want to do is go on, go on up to Refine Edge so we, that we can clean up the areas that were, are not very clean, like along the hair and through here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the Refine Edge. And what that does is that pulls up the mask with the back with the new background in it. So it's basically created a mask for you. If you would prefer, you can change this to where if you want to see it against a solid background, you can do that. So you can put it up against a white background, and that lets you see the selection a little better. Um, although when you're putting it on a background, a lot of times there's enough detail in the background to help distract a little bit. So it's one of those things that right off the bat, it, it hides it pretty well. And then what we can do is go in here and just clean this up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back to the white for now, just so that we can see a little better what's going on. Uh, let's see. What we're going to do now is, is the edge radius. We're going to boost that up just a little bit. And with our edge tool selected, we're going to come in here and we're just going to sort of paint in here the area that we want to soften and bring those hairs back a little bit. And you can see how it really does a nice job of kind of letting some of that back out. Let some of those images pop back out again. I'm just going to come in here and kind of brush along here and kind of smooth that out so we can hide some of that. Now what we can do is we can actually come in here and shift the edge a little bit. So if you look at the arm in here, we have a Sometimes we'll have a little bit of edge on here that we do want to get rid of. So we can shift the edge a little bit just to kind of encroach it in a little so that we hide some of that. Uh, so if, sometimes you'll see a little too much uh, overlap. You can just basically bring the, the edge in or you can bring it back out if you need to, depending on which way the mask is going. So we're going to pull that edge in a little bit. I'm going to kind of smooth this out a little bit if I can. And some of this we can go back into Photoshop uh, once we have the majority of it done. Um, you can come in here and change the contrast. Sometimes that will help eliminate some of the edges. And that's looking pretty good. Some of this stuff I can clean up really good once we have it set up. And uh, we can add a mask to it and get it completely set up so it's ready to go. Now that's looking like a pretty clean mask for the most part. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then I'm going to add a mask here just by clicking on the mask button. And what that's done is created the mask for us. Now there's a, a small area which I wasn't going to mess with a whole lot, but I can I can deal with this now. So this little spot where you can see through, what you can do is since you have a mask, you can go ahead and paint in here to eliminate some of the area. So we want to put the we want to be on our brush tool. So press the letter B for brush. I'm going to make it a little smaller so I can get up in here. And what we want to do is paint on the mask. So make sure your mask is selected. And if we paint in black, we're going to conceal the or conceal the effect. So and if we want to see the effect, then we paint in on white and we can we can shift it back again and see the image underneath. So right now I'm trying to get rid of the image. So I'm going to go ahead and paint in in black over over the mask. Now up here we had some issues too, if you remember. Um, some of these hairs look a little odd. So what I'm going to do is use the brush a little larger, a real soft brush, and just paint in black over that to, to let that fade away. And it just works. It's a real nice transition when you can do this. Is just kind of come in here and just soften things a little bit. Uh, sometimes there's a little fray, and what you can do is just do a real small brush and kind of sharpen it up a little bit and just mask that off too, and you can get rid of some of that. Now, I do remember we had an issue down here with the edge of the dress. 
So we can also paint in here, do the same thing, just kind of paint along there and get rid of that using the mask too. And if we end up slipping and maybe do doing too much like that, for example, what we can do is just, since we the white is allowing the image to show through, if we paint in white in an area that's black, it will show the original image. So I can swap these the foreground and background colors by pressing the letter X and just paint that back in. So I haven't lost anything. Um, this is a real nice way to, to come through and and, and just kind of add it, add things and subtract things really easily. If you save it as a PSD file just this way, you can always come back in here and fix it later. There's also some spots in here where it, uh, the effect was kind of, I didn't quite get it on the other, uh, on the mask. So what I can do is also come in here and just kind of paint on that again and just kind of eliminate that. Just use a small brush and just kind of pull that off. And that's done a pretty good job. Uh, my original plan was to enlarge this image a little bit because I didn't want the tr I didn't want the side of the tree. I wanted to zoom in on her a little bit. So since this layer is selected, I'm going to hit the the Command T, which is the free transform, and then basically hold the Shift key down, which is going to keep the proper proportions, and pull out at one of the corners to enlarge the image. And if I pull, if I go ahead and hold the shift key and the option key down at the same time, it will keep it centered with this little, uh, little hash mark in the center. And when I pull out, it'll keep that image centered and uh, enlarge it from the center. And I can just scoot it over a little bit. And that's kind of what I was shooting for. Uh, now, a lot of times when we, we, we merge images, what happens is the, the feel of this one is a little different than this one because the color is a little different. And probably the easiest way to fix that is trying to add a little bit of color to her that matches the background. And what I found works really well is going back to the mask, if we click on the mask to highlight the mask and we do a command click on the mask, what that does is that makes her a selection. So that was a selection that we had from before. Now if we come down with that selected, we can go ahead and click on the background layer. And then if we do a command J at this point, what we're going to do is copy the background just where the selection is made. So all this selection with a tree and her in it, I want to copy that. So I'm going to do a command J and I've basically made that a layer. So if we pull turn the other layers off, you're going to see this is the image of her and then here's the tree up in this side. So what we want to do is basically, well I'll go ahead and turn everything back on. What I want to do is drag this up over her. So we're actually covering her up with the image and you can see a little bit of a ghost of the image here. So now at this point what we can do is we can dial back the opacity because it's on its own layer and then we can also change the the blend mode on this. And if we change the blend mode, if we go all the way down to color on the blend mode, basically it adds that color to her. And at this point we can adjust the, the opacity down a little bit further and it kind of pulls some of that color that's in the background on her and kind of sort of melds it a little together. And um, at this point you can come in here and make changes. So save it as a PSD file and you can go ahead and make any changes you want. Uh, you can always add contrast to images by coming down here to the to the yin yang symbol which is the adjustment layer symbol click on that and we can add brightness and contrast so all we have to do is basically do a global effect we can pull down the contrast a little bit and pull down the brightness and then you can just paint back in here since we're on a mask again we can paint back in here to lighten some areas up so i'm going to hit my brush tool again and since white is showing showing the the image or showing the adjustment layer what I want to do is paint in black to cover some of that up so with a brush brush chosen I'm gonna enlarge my brush make it really soft and just come in here and just kinda of do some areas that I want to have just a little bit lighter and I'm gonna go ahead and pull this down just a little bit so I can work with it a little better so just doing something like this kinda of creates gives a real nice effect. So, And then what we can do is back that off a little bit and you can kind of see how it, it darkens everything up in the background and on her a little bit 
and just clicking on and off. So depending on the look you're going for, you can change things. If you want to add a little more contrast in it, because she seems a little flat, uh, what we can do is come back down to the adjustment layer, go to levels, for instance, and we can sort of punch up the blacks a little bit. And this is being done globally because this, this layer mask is on top of all the other layers. And we can bring the midtones down a little bit too and do the same thing again. We can, um, if we want to, we can lighten areas of this up. Let's say we wanted the mountains, uh, some highlights in the mountains. We can come in here and kind of paint on the mountain rocks if that was important to us to highlight those a little bit. But basically it allows you to pull some of the images together and just clean them up and uh, really do some fun work. And the totally believable image now uh, once we dropped it in and uh, the original wasn't quite that way at all. So hopefully that helps you out. If you have any comments, don't hesitate to shoot me a comment and I can hopefully answer anything I can for you. Uh, thanks for watching.